Something I've noticed with this question is students battle to visualize what the question is actually about. And so I'm going to do my best to get that part correct first, okay? Because it's difficult to do it if you don't really even know what they are trying to ask. So guys, do this with me. Imagine you have a piece of paper or like a, yeah, you got a piece of paper like this, okay? So literally visualize that. Then I want you to cut out square corners, okay? Like this, like this and like that. The, your, your piece of paper would now look like this. Okay, so can you visualize that? Okay, it's not the most neatest thing, but yeah. Now, what I want you to do is imagine, um, just imagine this line over here, imagine this line over here, and imagine a line here and here. Then what I want you to do is take this little piece here that's on this side, and I want you to imagine bending that upwards, okay? And then doing the same with this, doing the same with this, and doing the same with that. So bend all of them upwards. Would you agree with me, or can you now visualize that you would have almost like a, a lunchbox, but it wouldn't have a lid? It would, on, from a side view, it would look sort of like that. Uh, maybe I can do a 3D eye. I'm really not good at drawing, but I'll try. You would have something like that, but it wouldn't have a lid, okay? So just remember that, no lid. Now, okay, so I hope that that makes more sense. Now, they have said, uh, determine the value of x which will make the box have a maximum, there's that word maximum, so that means we're gonna use some calculus, and they want the maximum volume. Okay, so think about this, guys. Volume we know for a shape like this is just gonna be length times breadth times height. What would this length be? So they told us that the original length was 80, but then we cut x over there and we cut x over there. So what would be the length of this remaining piece? Well, well done if you said that it's 80 minus 2x. So that's going to be our length, okay? Then our breadth would be 50 minus 2x. And then what would the height be? Well, it would just be x because if you cut, if you had a square over here that you cut out and then you, you, know, you cut that square out, this length over here is x, and then you're gonna fold that up. So the height of this box is just going to be x. And so we can write it like that. Excellent, so that's the equation. Now, we can't really work with that. We need to multiply that out. So I'm gonna multiply these two brackets out first. Minus 100x plus 4x squared. I'm gonna make that a little larger. Plus 4x squared. And then we still got x. So I'm just gonna put that x in the front. Then you're gonna go multiply the x in, so it's gonna be 4,000x minus 160x squared minus 100x squared plus 4x cubed. We're then gonna simplify. I'm just gonna put the x cubed in the front. It's gonna become minus 260x squared plus 4,000x. All right, so there we go. Now, that is volume. Guys, now think about any type of graph. How do you find minimums and maximums? Well, it's always the first derivative equal to zero. So we're gonna take the first derivative of this, even though it's a volume, that's just, yeah, you can use calculus for anything. So we take the first derivative, which is 12x squared minus 520x plus 4,000, and we want the first derivative to be zero, so we make it equal to zero, and then you solve. Now you can use the quadratic formula. If you use the quadratic formula, you get answers of 33, comma three three and your other answer would be x equals to ten. Aha, so we have two answers now. Now when you make your first your gradient equal to zero on a graph, that could find your maximum and it can find your minimum. So mathematically there isn't a way to only find the minimum or only the maximum. So we have now found both. So to find the maximum volume, we are gonna take these two answers, plug them into the volume equation that we had, which was this one over here, and see which one gives us the maximum. One of them is probably gonna give us a really small answer, and one of them is gonna give us a really big answer. And so I'm gonna go plug 10 in, and if you plug 10 into the original volume expression, you end up with 18,000. That's if x is 10. Then let's say if x is equal to 33,33, let's see what we get. Negative 7,000. Now I don't know about you guys, but in the 
where I come from, you can't have a negative volume. And so that one is not even applicable. Okay? Sometimes this happens in maths where mathematically it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense in real life. And so as humans, we need to be able to interpret the answer and make sense of it. And so the answer is going to be 10. When x is 10, the volume is a maximum.